Welcome to the Cape Cod Community Media Center Gallery. I'm Linda Sandu, your host. I'm here with artist Sean Cassidy. Sean, welcome. Thank you. Nice we to be here. We love, love, love your work. And well, we love you. it so much that you are actually honoring us with being our January and February artist. And there's yeah. a reason behind it. <laughs> Your January art is going to be your new pieces that you've been working on. Yes. And February, in honor of our executive director, Terry Duenas, who is a music freak, yes. um, you have, have agreed to put up all of your, or some of your, maybe not all of, mm -hmm. your jazz art. Yes. And so let's start with January okay. and talk about your new pieces. Sure. Um, and very first of all, I want you to talk about yourself, as hard as, as that is for so okay. many people. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about who you are and where you came from and how art became part of your life. Okay. Well, I um, have uh, started my art back in New York City. Okay. Uh, studied at the School of Visual Arts, and I was an illustration major. Um, and as an illustration major, one of my pieces, to kind of tie into the music, uh, I did a jazz piece, and that kind of had, had kind of set the seed for wanting to do something like that, which came later, okay. where I finally came to that journey of, of painting those pieces, um, which uh, took a little while to kind of sit there and um, digest and let me develop my techniques and on working on uh, this particular style of work. And I finally came to, to working with that uh, in, in recent uh, years, that's where I've developed those. Um, as far as uh, what I do, I teach at uh, Bridgewater State University and Quincy right. College. Okay. I also teach uh, at the Cape Cod um, Art uh, Association, uh -huh. and I'm also uh, teaching private lessons in my home studio. So wonderful! Yeah, so wonderful. I'll have to take a lesson from you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Daddy, can you come, I would come join it. us. Come. Perfect. Yeah. Um, how, talk a little bit about your new work, but also how you got incorporated with Cape Cod. You, you've done several shows down here, is that correct? Yeah, uh, through the Cape Cod Art Association. Um, I've uh, had wonderful connections with that association and a lot of uh, uh, meeting people that are in the Cape, mm -hmm. and those connections have been um, great for getting my work to be uh, introduced to the community and sharing it and uh, being able to ex get that kind of exposure. Um, it's been a great, I came from living in uh, the East Coast and then going to Michigan coming back. So this move here has been, has been a wonderful kind of move into the back to the Northeast. So, and connecting with the Cape uh, Art Association has really been uh, a great thing. I'm, I'm happy with uh, the connections I've made with the community and it continues, it's, it's a nice, uh, uh, mix and I enjoy being here, so it's uh, That's it's been you know a good good uh, move. Good, I good, keep good, feeling good. that way. Yeah. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your January mm -hmm. um, show to begin with. Yeah. And we've got a few pieces here and next to us, and um, I want you to talk about what this is called, mm -hmm. how you came about doing it, and then kind of walk a little bit through the process so people can understand when they come to the show what they're okay. actually looking at, because that's important for people to really be mm -hmm. educated, as right. you know, in yeah. art. So. Yeah. Uh, well, these pieces are my most recent pieces. Um, the titles of the pieces are, um, not as, I think, as important to the piece necessarily. It does provoke a little thought, and I do give a little thought to the title. Mm -hmm. This one's called Relativity, and I guess in a s certain metaphorical sense, I'm trying to look at the portrait and let it speak to me about something that's going on um, in the piece. This one's called Perseverance, and I guess really that one I took from just the idea of the look into her um, her glance that goes off in the distance to something of, um, you know, that just came to me. And it, so it's kind of a spontaneous process sometimes when I'm titling these pieces. Okay. But as far as the painting process, th these are all painted on aerial um, maps, which is a, a large, like, kind of satellite view of the ground. So all of these are streets and blocks, all these blocks here are uh, actual. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they're all. So you, how did you get these? You just like went on Google. Uh, and well, when I was in Michigan, like I mentioned, okay. I was uh, I did my master's thesis there, and that's really where this work has oh, evolved okay. from okay. my master's thesis, and it's still 
um, has a lot of legs, as they call it, and, and sure. it keeps going. So, um, which I find is, is great because sometimes you take a, uh, something and it just kind of takes its path and then it kind of right. fizzles out. Right. This is still got legs to me. So, oh, it's wonderful. So, uh, and it's evolving a little bit too. Uh -huh. So, uh, but I, I, when I was at Central Michigan University where I did my master's uh, thesis, um, while I was working on that, I went to the uh, geography department and spoke with the professors there and they allowed me to have access into their flat files and just said pulled out the drawers here's maps here and there and I just went crazy shooting uh, map um, shots from you know until I so could you literally take any more shots photos yeah so I took my own okay. photographs of the photographs that they had okay so that I could gather them and then it would be uh, just easy to, to okay. acquire and I figured I'm on the campus I know they have Sure. material like this instead of searching the web and uh, and right. then I have more direct access to it. Okay. Uh, I'm actually in the thought of doing the same thing at Bridgewater uh, because I've I haven't maxed out my maps but there's something about this particular style of more of a condensed urban like block area uh -huh. that I find very fascinating to paint so, so I've I, ha I don't have a lot of these maps so I'm actually in the process of um, soon approaching the <laughs> geography department at Bridgewater State cool. and talking to them and doing the same, repeating the same process again. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so so you've taken the photos of maps, literally maps, street maps. Right, yeah. And how do you get them onto, now this isn't Canvas, is it? This is uh, printed on Canvas. Oh, it is, okay. And then I've mounted it uh, to board, okay. glued it down to a board. Okay. And uh, how do you actually print on canvas? Like uh, it's basically like a G-clay, but okay. usually like you will get a print of a famous uh, painting or right. some artist that they will sell their G-clays. Uh -huh. So, um, which is basically, you know, a uh, high-end inkjet print. Right. So it's, it's a very um, quality print because I want it to have archival quality to it. Right. So that it has longevity. I do seal it. As a as an extra precaution, which they do to, to the she clays as well right. before they give it to the mm -hmm. uh, someone that wants to hang something on their wall, yeah. so that before I paint on it, it's actually protected. Okay. Um, and then I um, basically start my oil painting over it. But um, before I even begin the process of painting, I have a little bit of um, more of an electronic means to uh, to plan the painting out. Uh huh. I uh, used to use. Um, a projector to get an idea how I want the image to look on the map right. and flip the map around to find out which way the face will be most interesting and most pleasing uh -huh. um, to me and hopefully to other viewers sure, too as well sure. and just the way that it intersects with the eyes and nose and there's just something interesting like you know this has got a certain feel to it in, in this part of the map here mm -hmm. um, lines kind of line up right at the eyelids right. and there's intersection points of where they bisect and it almost breaks it down into a little bit of a like a proportion system a little sure, bit too. So absolutely. <clears throat> because I think people will be amazed and I, I don't know how well this is coming off on, mm -hmm. on TV that you can look closely and really so much work went into this. It's yeah, amazing. so the f it's a process of um, Photoshop. Um, f I went to back step a little bit. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, projector idea, I don't use as much because um, it's easier to do like a composite in Photoshop. I can sit at my computer sure. and I can actually take the map and f rotate the image in Photoshop and, uh -huh. and then I take the photographs because I do and take pictures of, of um, you know, models that will sit and then <laughs> I photograph them from various angles and different um, looks so I can um, decide which one to choose from and, and various lighting um, setups. Uh -huh. S and then I will composite and then eventually come to a cropping of the, the f portrait and um, how it's positioned on the map. Mm -hmm. And I'll <coughs> go through you know layers of, of imagery and then finally decide on one that's the one I'm going to paint. Um, and then I'll print it out. And one of the new uh, techniques that I've kind of applied is I used to just get that set up, print it out, and kind of know that's what I want to look like in the final. And then I would print out the picture of the portrait just regular without the map. Right. But right. recently what I've done is I've actually printed the composite just as you see it here almost uh -huh. and use that as a guide because it kind of shows me how it may end right, up looking right. but there's still a little bit of you know um, variables that happen and I right. do want that to happen because it's more of the 
kind of spontaneous nature of like uh, a painting that I enjoy. Right. Um, but at least I can get it to be pre precisely placed. And using the map actually acts like a grid. If anyone's ever right. done any art, there's sure. like that simple structure of uh, using a grid. Yeah. So at the beginning, lately, what I've been doing is I'll actually come in and just plot out where I can see a per certain section of the map, and I can see where things are positioned, and I can lay that out. Uh -huh. And then I'll paint it like a regular portrait, mm -hmm. um, but very transparent paint. Mm -hmm. So what you see here with all this blockiness is not there until I've painted it to be a regular type of portrait, but a little bit blurry, because mm -hmm. it's just like a fuzzy version of that. Right. Um, and then I wipe a lot of it out so that I can still see the map. So it's a, it's a combination of like... Um, so is the blue the original map? Most of the blue you see, but I have painted over you it. You have painted over it. So it is a blue okay. map, and actually I do use that um, in Italian terms, like uh, they they uh, call the underpainting or the mm -hmm. wash right, right. Uh, in Primatura. Mm -hmm. So that to me is what this is. This is like the underlying matrix, and I actually have done some Photoshop changes to maps sometimes too, where I'll take the map and it might be black and white or even mm -hmm. like a sepia tone, right. and I'll do Enhance. some color, yeah, right. variations on it. So that way it will affect even the way I paint, and because it's transparent, it can actually affect the color and the feeling of the mood of like what may be uh, coming coming forth. And these paintings in particular don't have it happening as much in the eyes, but I have a, another piece that this I have. This is a fabulous eye, though. Yeah. That's there is an amazing so, there's some, Like when you look at yeah. that up close, that's an amazing eye. Yeah, and that has um, some of the map definitely coming through. Right, right. I have one previous piece where I actually barely painted any of the eye, and the map is almost... Um, really the whole map comes through and it's just a little bit of line around it so that's what's showing but um, that's where I, I finally got to the point where I did kind of a, it's an evolving process where now um, I get that painting done and then I'll just start where I, I call it the fun part begins where um, I can start to kind of work into this kind of mosaic like quality and that's right. where this is to me this particular style of map has um, it's starting to speak to me on this really interesting level where I'm, I'm going to just c continue with this style of map because there's something really interesting with the mosaic quality. Uh -huh. It's like breaking down um, the components of portraiture into like mosaic structures almost. Uh -huh. um, and it breaks down the, the portrait itself in, in a way that there's something on this more ethereal or I guess um, breakdown of if you want to get into like more symbolic or metaphorical nature of the f portrait t is, um, you know, just academic. Mm -hmm. But the reason I ended up going towards this style of work with um, superimposing like the, the two together and right. juxtaposing them, I mean, uh -huh. is uh, to take something that was purely academic that I've always enjoyed, uh -huh. figurative work, right. and create this kind of uh, composite of two um, ideas coming together. So the metaphor or the symbol of the map has been something of like a little bit of a interest in psychology that I have. Right, right. <coughs> this, there's uh, Jungian, I lean towards more Jungian than this, uh -huh. the Freudian psychology, right. but uh -huh. um, both have similar like ego, id, right. uh -huh. um, the shadow. Yep. And so there's this idea of like f um, the unconscious and the conscious that is in that kind of psychology. And to me, I don't necessarily think that people necessarily are going to look at this piece and think this, but when you create work, for me, it has to have some kind of heart to it. And Absolutely. It, and, it, and it gives me a process. Uh -huh. And then, of course, there's just the academic that I've been talking about. But there is this process of, like, figure ground that's academic, and these squares are kind of playing around with... Yeah. Uh, and in figure ground is basically juxtaposing two things against each other, and they're just, sure. you know, going back and forth in space. So that's happening. And, and to me the connection of the parallel of those two things is figure ground is like my way of vis creating a visual metaphor for conscious, unconscious, and this way that we flow and back and forth. So right. it's an interesting thing for me, and it does just add something to the piece that I hope yeah. you know, provokes thought. Or what I'm also trying to do is even just with a viewer, they're looking at the portrait, but then they're also going in right. and back out, right. which Absolutely. is kind of like a visual or an act of doing what the mind, to me, creates that unconscious, conscious level, right. which is just fascinating to me. So like, yeah. I just took the connection of an interest in psychology 
uh, which had I not gone to art, it was another career choice. Yeah. So it's a way to kind of connect the two interests I have. Yeah. And I use it in, in trying to explore the nature of being a human and that kind of yeah. psych and soma, they right. call it, the mind and the body. Right. It's kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah. So I absolutely love it. And it's funny, this one to me, I would have, I, I named this one when I saw it, I named this one City Streets. And I saw this hanging in some, a, mayor's, uh, a mayor's office or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's really like, yeah. you know, this is, this is what yeah. urban America is. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what this one speaks to me. Yeah. And your sisters, which will be at the show, you are having that one in, right? Um, it might be later because okay. that one's going to be at the Copley Society for oh, the that's new right, members show. Oh, that's right, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I would definitely yeah, put that in. Yeah, because your sisters, with her, with the way she was looking, I yeah. named that one when I looked at it, and I named that one for myself, not for you. <laughs> hey, no, it's okay. No, I, I, I find it interesting when home. people say that. I though, named yeah. hers going home because it was like she was looking off, and she's on a yeah. map, and she's like yeah. heading home, and right. you know, yes. I guess because yeah. the holidays are here, yeah. And, yeah. and so that's what I named right. her. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I find I always like uh, hearing stories like that where people look at the painting and they either give it another title, which right. I find interesting. Right. Sometimes I'm like, well, that's good. I like that. It's interesting. Maybe I should have titled it that now. Yeah, because <laughs> like, th but that's the away. the uh, you know open nature of like Absolutely. artwork that c creates. Everyone brings something oh, yeah. of themselves to a piece, and yeah. they make a connection to it. Right. And to me, that's you know, I'm I'm not trying to put forth a narrative. I kind of want to have this right. a little bit of that ambiguous quality that you bring forth sure, whatever sure. associations that you will yeah. make. Right. Um, and I'm just kind of playing around with these kind of questions that I'm pondering, yeah. creating the work that makes me um, delve into it and become fascinated by the process. Right. And then uh, hopefully... Letting, letting it let, talk to the people. Yeah, right? and hopefully yeah. It, it does something on that level for them. So. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's really wonderful. And um, so is this has the oil on top of it, correct? Yeah, so I... I um, to finish the, yeah, it's the basically product. like it's. I would call it a glazing technique, okay, um, because it's transparent. Uh huh. Um, but I'm not particularly with these two pieces. I'm not glazing it in the traditional sense of like using oils. Um, so it's transparent, but I'm using more of a dry brush. Okay. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because in the past I have done some glazing methods, and it depends on the surface that I'm working on. That it sometimes can create a little bit of a sheen. Right, and you. That don't I don't want that. that. So. Right. Um, wiping away and very thin layers of paint and um, leaving it to be somewhat transparent. I, I used to use liquid, some glazing techniques use like uh, linseed or some kind right, of you right. know, oil based medium, that, uh -huh. um, but it tends to have a little bit of a sheen that I don't like. Yeah. So I've been slowly um, changing that technical process but it doesn't really change yeah. the actual outcome of the painting it's just the process right. really that changes but a I bit. love and and just to recap uh, your process is yeah. amazing oh thanks I mean truly yeah, it took when, me when you think of all the different time, yeah. mediums you yeah. go through I mean from geography to geometry yeah. um, to actual photographs I mean you have mm -hmm. to photograph the maps mm -hmm. but also your your models right and and then then you and get then to the, the process then you even finally, begins with the art, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, you know. I know sometimes I'm, you know, chomping at the bit, as they say, when you're trying to wait for your map to be printed. And usually uh, I try to print more than one map because I'll create a piece and then I'm ready to do another one. Sure, and sure. You're like, oh, and then I, I'm, I think I have one left of this size. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I try to print more than, than one so I can just keep the process going because it is, it's time. It's a time-based thing yeah. where you have to um, prep these, and even these, I had to mount these to the board before I could even paint it. Sure. So, um, and then I'm like, you know, you're getting like excited. I'm like kind of <laughs> waiting to the next day. I'm like, they're dry, and then trim them. I'm like, okay, now I can paint. So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And how did you choose your models? How did were they uh, just, these I know your were? Sister, obviously. Yeah. Um, I something that just. Sometimes it's um, for these particular models. We're at the back in Michigan uh -huh. at the university that I was um, studying at, um, and I had been creating uh, paintings and getting people to f uh, photograph. So some people were actually starting to approach me, like, "You're the map guy, aren't you?" That's so right. I would, you know, I'd pay them like for an hour uh -huh. so that I would 
so that people would, students would want to come because sure. I'd get them like you know sure. little uh, stipend so for have it. These people and then seen the finished product? No, they haven't. I haven't stayed in touch with them, but there were students that were interested, and I'd come in. They'd come into the studio where I was working, and I'd show them the work. And um, at first, when I first started the process, I was just kind of finding people that were fascinating to me, uh -huh. and then I would kind of um, not like. Like stalk them or anything, but I would try to find. I'm like, do you oh, know this student? Them. I'm like, oh, yeah. And there was one student there where it was a little. He was like, at first I thought you were some, you know. I said, well, come into my studio and then you can decide. You don't have to sit That's for me. Right. But then afterwards, he was really happy That's uh, when he saw the painting and everything after the end. So he was like, wow. He's like, but at first I really didn't know who you were. And I was like, I know. I was just you just have an interesting face and you're, right, you had, right. had a red afro yeah. and it was, uh, oh, great. you know, and That's he's just awesome. really interesting uh, features. So. Um, and then there's some people I just will photograph that I do find, I'll find something in that particular portrait from the lighting and right. um, I'm in the, the uh, process of uh, searching for some, some you know, new uh, like portfolio of models to, yeah. uh, to shoot so I can go through another series over Good time. For you. Yeah, so That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. All right, we're jumping to February. Okay. Fast forward to February right. and we are talking jazz. Okay. So let's talk about your jazz art now right. and how you got inspired. I know you said you love music. How did you get inspired to paint jazz music? musicians? I should um, well, uh, it's jazz and blues um, have been part of my like studio sounds um, for the most part. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I listen to some classic rock. I also enjoy that, but I do enjoy um, you know the heart of blues and just the sounds of jazz and it's just uh, nice to listen to while I'm painting so um, as I mentioned before when I did the uh, piece back in my undergrad days in New York City I did a little uh, illustration of uh, jazz musicians and it kind of sparked even then I was creating a little bit of a series and exploring it mm -hmm. but I hadn't really developed my skill as a painter yet and I was kind of you know exploring possibilities and there is uh, a thread that t ties into back, if you look at the pieces, you could probably see that. Right. Um, but I'm definitely more uh, mature as an artist to handle uh, what the series is about, and uh -huh. I have a little bit more of a control of it, I think. But it basically stems from just the fact that I really enjoy listening to music, and there's something about um, watching musicians when I've gone to clubs when oh, I was in yeah. New York City. I Absolutely. listened to, uh, there was a club in uh, New York City called Mondo Cane that was a blues club and you would literally be like sitting at the bar a uh, little table next to the stage like right here and then there'd just be a little tiny horseshoe of a few tables and then maybe another table behind me and then the bar and it was like a tiny little place and you're right there with the music yeah. and the musicians like right in your face playing guitar yeah. so um, watching them and even when I watch any musicians that you know play um, around here or and when I see them play, they have like that um, emotion that right. comes forth in their body language or um, in their facial expressions. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not really uh, musically inclined, as they say. <laughs> so um, it is kind of on my bucket list, I guess. So, you know, I'd like to eventually get to the point where I could maybe play a song there like they go. do. There you but go. Uh, I kind of live vicariously by painting them. That's so awesome. that's my way of like enjoying the music and then painting that particular artist. And the kind of important factor for creating those, uh, or the series of jazz musicians is that uh, I play that particular artist's work while I'm playing it so that I can oh, click into uh, or dial into um, the you know, the, the mood of their music. And even when I haven't played it, I may be playing just a series of jazz. And to me, it's almost like part of the the rule sure. for me, like I have Absolutely. to have to put their music, and it just uh, feeds the painting really, because yeah. I can put color forth. There's something about capturing um, the gestural nature of the the, the music, the mm -hmm. improv. Uh, well, when you talk about art and figure painting, because I do figure painting, so this is a way to connect to the figure as well. Um, when you study art, there's the gestures that you learn from figures mm -hmm. um, and capturing like just the essential essence of a pose. Right. So by comparison, if you want to parallel um, the uh, music and that kind of um, 
improvisational nature that, that you see jazz and blues, they riff off of each other. Uh -huh. And there's, uh, there's that kind of, um, to me, a parallel between getting the um, essence of that feeling of the music and using gesture as a way to capture that same right. quality. Right. And then capturing the gesture of actually this kind of emotional body language that's feeling in the, the soul of the music. And then putting forth like maybe brush marks that capture that energy that, and approaching it as if to be the musician sort of like where you're like, you know, I'm still painting with control and uh -huh. trying to make it look like a figure. But sure. as I'm painting, after I get everything blocked in, right. I want some of the brush strokes to almost yeah, riff, the riff off right, of right, the music right. a little bit, but well, I'm still I, controlling it. You know? And I love, um, I think it's this one in front of us, right? This one, where yeah. I actually, when I saw it from across the room, yeah. you can almost hear the sound coming out of it. I mean, that's a great painting. You can yeah, like that, that literally one, hear noise coming out right. of that. Yeah, and the, this, uh, the portrait of Lee Morgan, um, sometimes with the background color, and that's one of the reasons I, I, yeah. I brought that one in too, because it does speak highly to the this, concept of the jazz Love it. that there are certain colors that even like if yeah. you close your eyes you listen to music yeah. you kind of your mind will wander I know that um, I'm a fan of, of like the movie Fantasia from right. Disney uh -huh. and that's one of the beginning sure. things they talk about they enter and they like and they talk about the mind and yeah. to me that's the nature of this 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 there's a little connection yeah. um, but yet I still want it to be like a portrait right because right. I like to paint people and yeah. it's fascinating to me. So I'm trying to make this connection. I don't want to just paint abstract colors, which would be fun too, but I want to capture the person. I'm fascinated by them mm -hmm. playing the music yeah. and, and uh, you know, you know, just playing the instrument itself and um, getting that kind of the face that's like just, you can see them. Their like passion. An, yeah, their passion. They're feeling it. Yeah. So um, in a way, that's my envy right there yeah. on the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm trying to also share like their, what they're they're portraying from well, that particular like album or something yeah. like that that and I'm Sean, listening to. I want to thank you for sharing yeah. yourself, your art, your paintings, your talent. Oh, well, thank you. We yeah. could talk forever, yeah. but time is up. Well, thank and you for having me, and I appreciate. Oh, uh, absolutely. Being able to share We're looking forward. We're going to have two open houses: mm -hmm. one for the the mapping art. Mm -hmm. and one for the jazz art. So we will see you, at least people can come in and meet you. Yeah. And, um, and ask lots of questions and hopefully have a better understanding of what your art is. All right, well thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It. All right, Thank thanks. you. I'm Linda Sandu, we'll see you next time.